Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for the Monster Rivalist and in this video I'm going to be addressing the famous question of how much ammunition do I need for SHTF? How much ammo should a prepper have? And this has been covered in numerous videos. Usually it's it's not as realistic as I, I wish it would have been in many of these cases um, and mostly I share the opinion and the idea of you know have as much ammunition as you can. If you can have 10,000 rounds of each caliber or more, by all means be my guest more power to you but in this video I want to address this in a realistic manner honestly based on actual uh, experiences and examples that you know some more likely than others some even more far less likely and more far-fetched but that still have happened and in fact happening right now as as we're speaking so that's the way I'm gonna be going about this I know I talked about this topic same question I think that last year even if you stayed for that video stay for this one because because I'm gonna be giving you a few more points as to chew on this and maybe have a, a more useful approach. So, first thing first, number one is, um, how much ammunition do you actually need for like self-defense? You know, what is it that you have your guns for? Most people that have firearms, it's gonna be something along the lines of a concealed carry gun, home defense, that sort of thing. How much ammunition do you have? And based on that, how much should you have stocked just for a, a rainy day SHTF? If I go by what I have here, if you want a, the quick answer to this and you don't want to stay for a 15 minute video or more, I uh, actually address this in three survival skills. Yes, of course, I always recommend my own books that's why I actually write them so when it comes to handguns I said here you want to stock at least 200 rounds per gun 500 rounds would be even better and when it comes to long guns try stocking no less than 500 to two to a thousand rounds per long gun that would be like a, a minimum requirement if for a lot of people um, you know, that's, uh, it's kind of difficult to come up with a, a certain specific number and, and make a good uh, claim so as to justify so. But I will usually tell you this, especially for this first point of realistically, how many rounds are you going to be going through in self-defense? I mean, I know people that have been shooting uh, at bad guys for most of their uh, adult life. You will rarely find people that have spent more than a box of ammunition in actual uh, self-defense scenarios maybe someone that it's like a um you know, dedicated SWAT type of guy that's been in, in this sort of thing for 20 years, even then, you'll find out that most of these guys rarely ever fire their gun. If they do, it's rarely gonna be a, a gunfight where they're gonna be going through multiple magazines. Every once in a while, it does happen. Is it common? Not at all. It's not common that they even discharge their guns, even though, of course, eventually it's, it's, a, it's a possibility. What it is, it's a, it's a few rounds. I mean, you will find some videos of officers going through maybe one magazine, maybe two magazines, but there's a lot of those where it's just one or two rounds. In average, if, you, if we go by the numbers, and I know this is a, a very um, debated number, the, the idea of three or four rounds per gunfight because you, know, you don't know how these statistics end up being and you have maybe suicides or you just have someone that went to murder someone with just round. But really, a, a box of ammunition I don't know if there's going to be a lot of people that through their life they're going to be spending more than a box of ammo in self-defense. So 200 rounds, which is what I say in my book for a handgun, that means you know that's going to be four boxes of ammunition. Um, this is mostly because of this, not because I think that the average person is going to be going through 200 rounds of ammo in self-defense scenarios, but it, it's often the case, and this is very real, that someone has maybe just one box of ammo because, I mean, I just bought a 500 buck gun or a 600 or 700 buck gun whatever it is got the holster the cleaning kit uh yeah just give me a box of ammo just in case and that's it that guy takes that box of ammunition to a range there's no ammo there for whatever or they just go to a place where there's none to be bought they just shoot their box of ammo because they were having a good time i'm going to be replacing it later and they end up with a gun and not a single round for said gun that happens that is actually a lot more common than some people think i've seen 
so many exam so many cases of people that had like half a box of ammunition because they just bought one, went to the range, shot half, and just you know saved the other half just in case, which is better than nothing. But the idea of having 200 rounds of ammunition, like four boxes, is you know what? Okay, you went to the range, had a good time, you went shooting, and went through a couple boxes. At least when you go back home, you have a couple boxes of ammo. You have something now. When it, when it comes to, to long guns, uh, people have this, uh, especially the, the American audience in, in the United States, the prepper survival community is very much in tune with the idea of, of, um, uh, of freedom and family and, and in country and the idea of, of defending a family and freedom, family and liberty. So that's where the long gun takes on more of this role of, yeah, uh, for, for fighting, you know, tyranny, foreign, enemies or domestic enemies or whatever it is the long gun is like your your war fighting gun and that implies that you're gonna be going through more ammunition yeah I get it if you want to have a, a 500 rounds a thousand rounds for a long gun I think it does make sense especially with that approach to the possibility of using it let's also say this if you have something like this if you have a, a bolt action rifle you're gonna be going through less ammo simply because the gun does not allow for a lot of ammo expenditure based on the on the firing system the mechanism is you know slowly charging five rounds at a time bolt action you know my F AL is going to be chewing and going through ammunition much much faster, even when using it in in set rolls. Um, but I get the idea now. How likely is this to happen? Um, you fighting you know, in, in a in, in a kind of guerrilla warfare? Could it happen? Sure. Um, now, if you're looking at the, the kind of use a, a soldier will have, then you're talking about something else. You're talking about logistics, and you're th talking about something that's going to be taken care of, you know, a million rounds at a time, you know, something like that, because you're part of, of, a, of a dedicated armed force. Now, if you're fighting more of the guerrilla type of warfare, well, look at the Taliban. We have a perfect example right now. How many of these Taliban fighters are carrying a thousand rounds of ammunition each? They're still part of a system where if they don't have a resupply and restock and proper logistics it still doesn't make a whole lot of sense now if you want to tell me that in your homestead you want to have a thousand rounds per gun I completely agree with you that's perfectly fine I think that as a bare minimum those uh, a couple boxes a uh, four boxes of ammunition for your main gun um, a bit more ammo for your long gun that's fantastic um, how likely are you to go through a lot of that through uh, actual self-defense not all that much now now is where we go to point number two that I want to make in this video which is actually using your ammunition for other purposes for, for training specifically because most of the use that people think of firearms in terms of self of, of survival and preparedness it's gonna be something around self-defense even for hunters you know I, I know most most hunters barely have like a, a one or two boxes of ammo. Hunters that are not preppers, the hunters that are not survivalists, they will barely have more than one or two boxes because they really don't use all that much ammunition. Especially if it's a good hunter, it's likely going to be just you know round, one round. And they, if they have a powerful rifle, they're shooting some large you know lots of meat type of game. Maybe they shoot one of those once a year or maybe a couple times a year. Not a lot more than that. Now you're telling me you're living a you're a country boy and you're hunting rabbits every weekend and sure then maybe your life is going to be depending on having a, a sustainable amount of 22 long rifle for that's kind of small game hunting or maybe shotgun ammunition but most often it's rather stuff that's going to be using for self-defense in terms of realistic survival needs now in 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 terms of training here's where things get a lot more um, complicated in terms of ammunition because you go through ammunition a lot faster in training anyone that's going to be shooting maybe once a week a couple times a month you're gonna be going through 200 400 500 rounds in a class easy that wouldn't be uh, all that un uncommon it's actually quite common that in a good class 500 rounds is pretty realistic so even if you have a thousand rounds it's probably not gonna be lasting you a year you know if you shoot frequently not gonna be lasting you a year let's say you are very much more careful in terms of of how you use the ammunition and you know there's a, a situation going on not all that different from what 
what you're seeing right now. Shortages of ammunition, a, a pandemic. Well, here is where you're gonna be trying to save as much ammunition and maybe not shooting all that much. Still, some shooting is necessary so as to maintain those skills. So maybe, you know, a box every couple weeks, a box a month, you know, joining a, a, a class, a tournament or, or something, a, a training session, you're still gonna be going through some ammunition. Here is where I'd like to point out a good tip. That's something that I refer to in, in the book as well. The idea of having alternatives for training in terms of um, a 22 caliber, uh, caliber conversion kit for your gun, or even better in many cases, an actual separate gun that is shooting uh, pallets instead, but it's the same form factor. This is a, a licensed uh, Glock 19. It's licensed by Glock. It's the same format and the same uh, geometry as a Glock 19, but it's only using pellets and these are super super cheap yeah you need the, the little bottles and stuff but it is still very very affordable and you have you know uh, 1500 little pellets here so you can do a lot of training with this very cheap I'm gonna be leaving the links below for these things guys I know that um, it's something that, that a lot of, uh, of people end up getting and, and uh, putting to good use. This is a very valuable tool so as to save on this stuff. Not only that, think of it this way. Right now with the pandemic, there's been, uh, there's been people in lockdown that couldn't just go wherever it is that they wanted. And even if they had the ammunition, they just couldn't go to a range just to actually do shooting if they didn't have the land for it themselves, which is often the case as well. Most people don't have their own shooting range in their, in their backyard. For those people, this even more so would have been a great tool because with this kind of thing in your basement, in your backyard, you can shoot practicing those same motor skills very cheap right without spending any almost any money at all and doing it in in the comfort of your home or more more to the point in the only place where you can actually do this given that you're um, you don't have the chance of going elsewhere now think of it in terms of you know is civil warfare conflict it's just dangerous out there for whatever reason forget about the pandemic if there's you know anarchy on the streets you're not likely to go around driving in different competitions across your state this is still going to be allowing you to stay home and practice some of those skills. So these tools are very valuable as a training aid. I think they're they're fantastic. So I'll leave it there. I also see if I find something in like an AR, like an AR BB gun, so as to include in the links there. That would be also a nice addition, so as to have this training from home kind of kit. Okay. So that is in terms of training. That's one of the things that people will immediately point out when it comes to how much ammunition do you need. Um, I, I would also say this. Uh, there's a, the very real point number three, which is having it for barter, for trading, because of its high value. Uh, I get it. I understand. And I know that a lot of people that made a, quite a bit of money selling some of their ammunition in these times of shortages for a, a nice a premium. Yeah, in terms of what kind of stuff it's going to be super valuable, I would maybe go more towards this. You know, food and ammunition, you basically cannot have enough of. How much food would you want to have? As much as I can. I plan on eating, if possible, every single day and not dying. That's kind of the thing with food. And food, if you're looking for a barter item that is not precious metals, it's not actual cash, you know, if you're looking for something that is in high demand, especially when things get tough, canned food. Especially protein. Every time I talk with people that are really going through crap, like my, my buddy there in Venezuela, he says, dude, pro protein, canned tuna, that canned meat. That's the kind of, even rice beans all that is good but that's more easily found than this sort of stuff this is this goes for a premium this is high demand valuable stuff well not not this one kind of soup but a, a can of, of, of meat protein that is definitely something you want to have even this it ha has its value as well now with ammunition you have it you're, you trade you sell it by all means have it I'm not saying not have don't have ammunition I'm saying know what your priorities are know what you're actually getting for uh, getting and why you want to have this if it's in terms of you know realistic self-defense maybe with a couple of boxes of ammunition you're really not likely to go through more than that um, but yeah that, that would be the the, the point number um, 
number three in terms of, of all of this. Uh, number four is a, another very important point is how much can you actually carry if it gets down to that? Because if you're planning for uh, preparing for you know a, a worst case scenario, warfare, guerrilla warfare, fighting for your liberty, freedom, country, and, and glory, and all that good stuff, uh, how much are you going to be carrying around? Look at, uh, look at the Taliban guys. Those guys really have a, a bunch of, of magazines with them. It's really not going to be more, a lot more than 200 rounds. Maybe six, seven mags full, maybe a bit more. But do they carry around a thousand rounds each? I don't think so. I don't think that's likely. Uh, so even if you're like a, a guerrilla warfare, um, you will still be part of a system that at some point needs resupplying logistics and so on. Um, do you have a stockpile in your homestead and you're part of that community and you have ammunition so as to contribute to it? Of course, fantastic. That's great. You know, do that if you if you can, if you have the the, the possibility, if you have the the financial resource for that. By all means, go for, go with it. But also look at the other side of the equation, which is far more related to the kind of stuff that I cover in my channel, in my books, which is the side of the civilian guy that just wants to stay alive, keep his family safe. Those guys are the ones that are just going to the airport, maybe pretty late. So, and those guys, if they have a long gun, they're likely to get shot. Most of those, if, if they have a gun, they would wish it was something like this that could be concealed. This is the stuff of my first book when I explained that for a survivalist, this is the real main gun for him. This is the kind of thing you can keep concealed. So you have something that in a, in a building, in an alley, whatever happens, you come across some people that, you know, you have something to defend yourself, especially if you have the skills for it with one of these firearms, you know, with, with a Glock, with one of these mags and sufficient skills, you can do a, a, a certain amount of, of damage to people that want to hurt you, maybe two, three, four, four people, if you know what you're doing. And if your skill level is considerably better than your average illiterate AK toting um, Taliban and you catch them by surprise, maybe you can get yourself out of a nasty situation. And if you're quick on your feet and make good decisions in that moment, maybe you make it out of there alive. Um, if you go around uh, and not, you're not part of that and you go around with, with, with a long gun, we know of people that been shot going to the airport simply because they had the long gun. And understandably so. You cannot, as a, as a soldier defending a certain position, you just cannot let a guy advance towards you with a, guy, with, with a gun in, in that kind of scenario. So the stuff that you keep concealed, you know, maybe, maybe disassembling one, but something that can be concealed. Now, in terms of how much ammunition are you going to be carrying in that in that situation? Very, very little. I'm still not saying, I'm still not trying to downplay the importance of having a lot of ammunition. Let's say I'm living in Kabul. I have a lot of food. I have a lot of ammunition. I know I have to drag my ass out of there quickly because Americans are going to be leaving that place very soon. I'm still not going to be dragging around in my vehicle thousands and thousands of rounds. Maybe a little bit for, self, for, for protection but likely I may still be able to trade it for something that's useful or maybe just sell it and leave with a cash. Guys, honestly, when you e evacuate a place like that or even when you just bug out in a hurry or in, in less than ideal circumstances and I have done that before, I didn't take a single round with me. I didn't take a single firearm with me simply because you're not allowed because you're jumping on a plane and the only thing that matters really for people that have done this, you know this perfectly well, passport cash. Uh, as much cash as you can have, as much money as you can have in a bank account, or these days uh, uh, probably crypto as well, money, papers. You get your ass out of there, you restart, you rebuild elsewhere, but you're not likely to drag your guns along with you. So there's a good chance that your uh, fort of, of ammo is going to be staying behind if you're doing this. now. You're telling me, no, I'm doing this like in my homestead and it's going to be, you know, my, my county is going to be a little uh, fortified location in my country in the middle of civil war. Yeah, those, you know, 100,000 rounds of ammunition that you have will be a, a great contribution to the cause. Uh, honestly, realistically, 
the stuff that I'm talking about here is far more likely to be the case if you are getting yourself out of very dangerous situations yourself and especially your family which is something that ironically enough is not taking into consideration when people uh, talk about these topics um, finally point number five realistically what are your priorities? That is also something that needs to be addressed. You're telling me that you have 10,000 rounds of ammunition. Great, I love it. I, I, you know, I, I wish I had more ammunition myself. I, I can never have enough. How much money do you actually have? Uh, no, I have, uh, I have 100,000 rounds of 5.56 for when the zombies come. Uh, how much cash do you have? None, because I'm preparing for zombies. You're not doing this realistically. You know, if you have um, a thousand rounds, what, how much cash do you have? 5,000 bucks cash? 10,000 bucks cash? How much gold do you have? How much money do you have in different accounts and hopefully in different parts of the world? If you're, um, if you're clever about these sort of things, how much cryptocurrency do you have? You know, if I'm running from Kabul right now, I'd rather have that money in cryptocurrency than in ammunition. Again, nothing against having stockpiles of ammo. You're likely gonna be using it even in good times. That's why you should have a lot of it. But if you're preparing and you're having to make decisions, financial decisions, be smart about it and don't leave uh, a, a huge hole in your preps simply because you're stocking up ammunition for a, a, a guerrilla warfare that is extremely, extremely unlikely to be something you'd like to do, end up involved in. Okay, folks? Other than that, you know, little tips like the stuff with, with, with the BBs, uh, stuff like um, having a system that are compatible with one another, uh, Glock 9mm, Just Right Carbine, both use 9mm ammunition, so I have, you know, my, my long gun ammo works for my uh, handgun as well, and I stock up on just one. Is this as good as 5.56 or 308? No, you know, definitely not the case. It's not gonna be the same thing, uh, but, um, you're, you're still talking about something that's very compatible and you're getting some more uh, range and more accuracy with, with this system. Same magazines as well. So be smart about that sort of thing as well. Um, ammunition that is uh, cheap, shotguns. I have a few shotguns myself. Those are great guns. And the ammunition is usually quite affordable. You can pack it in different ways. You can buy uh, uh, crates. I mean, I, I don't know where you are, but I get a, a shotgun shells cheaper than 9mm. I mean, I, I get the uh, for for less that, than I can get nine millimeter at least at this moment. So and it's a lot more powerful and in, in many ways more versatile. So be smart about how you're spending even within the ammunition what kind of ammo you're stocking up and how you uh, make that compatible with the guns and the system that you have going on folks i hope you enjoyed this video links below for all some of this stuff and my books available there as well see you on the next video have an awesome day take care